What say you? Yeah. You got you. Uh, you want to talk about Rings of Power, AC Gamer? You want to talk about Rings of Power? Yeah, I'm. I'm. Uh, I'm. I'm finally caught up. I caught up this weekend. Oh, you did. Okay, so yep. I don't want to skip right to that most latest. What did we talk about? Episodes one, two, and three last time. I think so. We got up to pom to uh, pom 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 ba deal go. <laughs> Tom ba pom ba bill. Tom ba Tom ba bill. Tom Bombadil. Yeah, that's right. Um. Where's an episode by episode breakdown real quick? Or what's happened? What's happened since Tom Bombadil? Help me remember while I try to find a kind of uh, breakdown. It's a uh, it's funny it's funny because a, a lot of it for me has been blending together a lot. So I don't think I can name a specific episode where yeah. things are happening, but just like certain character arcs. Yeah. Uh so a lot of what's happening now are sort of events that we saw in flashbacks of uh, the Shadow of Mordor games. It's uh, Sauron disguised as uh, the the giver of gifts, Anatar. Uh, Anatar. Anatar. Uh, he uh, he tricked his way to Urgeon, where uh, Celebrimbor is, and um, he he was so jazzed about uh, creating the three rings of power that seemed to be working like a charm for the elves. And so he was convinced that in order to save Middle Earth to preserve it, uh, let's give some to the dwarves. Make the seven dwarf rings, um, which uh, they give to uh, Durin's father, Durin the Third. And uh, long story short, the short the ring it's able to save their their world. They you know they they're currently in Kazal Doom. Uh, but it's, uh, kind of making him go a little, uh, off, off the deep end, you know what I mean? Totally. It's, it's, so that, it's as they, uh, described in the Fellowship of the Ring when they visit Castle Doom, is like, you know, the, the dwarves started mining too deep and greedily. They dug too deeply, yeah, too, <laughs> I forget how the quote goes, but yes, they're yeah, going yeah. too so, far. So there's there's seven dwarf rings. Yes. Uh, <laughs> that what you're laughing about over there, yeah. Mike Young? Welcome to it. Glad you're enjoying it as well, as well. Uh, it's not finished airing, Nimrod. We're, there's one more episode to air. I believe it comes out tomorrow. They're coming out Thursdays, right? I think they're coming out Thursdays. I think so. So I think the last episode is tomorrow. Yeah. So time to start watching, Nimrod. If you start today. You can finish tomorrow. It'll be great. Yep. Um, yeah, seven dwarves, man. And Galadriel yeah. is Snow White. <laughs> Obviously. Obviously. Just kidding. <laughs> I don't think she's even met the dwarves, has she? Uh, not really. She hasn't really had any interactions with them. Elrond is the one who's he's best buddies with uh, uh, Durin the Fourth. Um, There's but anyway, Durin. Yeah. But anyways, that's what's going on in there. For any more, they have a few more like Lord of the Rings connections. Like they show like the building of the of the special door that they used in the yeah. Fellowship of the Ring to get into Castle Doom. Yeah, speak friend and enter. They even kinda, made, like a friend pun allusion to it. Because you know that that was kind of cementing like the dwarf and elf, like you know, being allies at that time. Um, but yeah, I'll, I think yeah, a lot of everything seems to be focused on. Celebrimbor and Sauron and just Man, like Celebrimbor though oh my god in this most recent episode when he finally starts to realize everything what's the actor's name who's playing Celebrimbor here he's fantastic uh I don't know his name I'm looking it up Charles Edwards is that our guy I believe so yeah Charles Edwards show me his face Wow, look at him when he's not Celebrimbor. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, he's fantastic. I'm loving him. I want him to be in more things, and I want... I don't know. Like, I like the Celebrimbor character because of the Shadow of War series, the video games. Yeah, that's that, what and that... like the character. But this guy playing Celebrimbor as it's all happening and watching him break and be twisted and... and, and I don't know, realize how he's been manipulated by Anutar, Anutar Sauron. Oh my goodness, he's been putting on a hell of a performance. I'm loving so, it. 
let me ask you this, fellas, because yes. as I, I put in the chat, I still need to start watching it. It's on my Amazon to watch list. Good. Um, maybe I'll convince the wife to watch it tonight. Um, do you think that if this continues to be successful, they might do a series on the shadow of war? Or would That's you want like to another see that? Hundred of years, and also kind of, I wouldn't want to because I loved the game so much. Like, leave them, let them be their own story, and you know, do more stuff leading up to it. Sure. Well, but I think I think they did such a good job with The Last of Us. Mm. You know, Amazon really does do well doing video game adaptations. Wasn't Last of Us HBO Warner Brothers? No, it was Amazon, wasn't it? No, it was Max. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That. yeah. It's an HBO show. Get out of here. <laughs> what am I think? Well, I watched it on uh, Amazon. Amazon's got The Boys, though, which has been really good. It's got Invincible animated really good. Uh, I think it's a good Fallout. Oh, oh Fallout? They, oh, Fallout. Fallout. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Fallout. Good. Fallout yeah. was so good. Um, I think the problem is, I don't know how, I don't know if they're, they can adapt Shadow of War into anything else because that was like all an original story from WB. Yeah. 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 Uh, you know our our main guy in Shadow of War. I I forgot his name already. He's like a completely you know oh, um, the Ranger. Oh, what was his name? <laughs> I just kept calling him the Ranger. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, he was a completely original character, but yeah. Um. No, there's no there's still plenty of like stories from the lore that they can adapt. Um, or, you know, they can just start, you know, making some original stories. I mean, a lot of it's what's going on. It's a big world, and they could do a lot there. Just go out, just give us some stuff out east, man. Just make it up. I don't even care. Show me the east. Show yeah, me the a lot east of, of Middle Earth. A lot of what they're doing now in uh, Rings of Power is, you know, lots of liberties taken, which yeah. is fine. Um, but they are, you know, we, we still got a, a new Peter Jackson movie to look forward to. Supposedly two, I guess. Wait, what now? You haven't heard? No, uh, the... I, I think I have, but I'm trying to remember what it was. Oh, what it's the, it? the Hunt for Gollum. That's right. Okay. Which will supposedly bring back Andy Serkis and yeah. maybe Ian McKellen and Viggo Mortensen. We'll see. Yeah. I, <laughs> I, 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 I They're going to de-age I, Viggo. They're going to de-age him. I mean, <laughs> it's something like that or... Um, you know they'll cast them younger because it does like take place uh, a lot a lot of time before the fellowship yeah i believe yeah no there that that whole story is kind of just based off a few lines in in the books and they even made a fan film uh oh, really? called the hunts for gollum oh Produce it. Uh, focus of the film will be understanding Gollum's mind by exploring his backstory and contrasting personalities. Lord of the Rings: The Hunt for Gollum is expected to be released in 26. Oh boy! Oh boy! And then plus we've got that animated movie. I don't know. Did, were, did we talk about that last time? And there's a there's been a there's been a trailer since. Oh, yeah. I think we did talk about it. What's it yeah. called? The War of the Rehirim. Yeah, yeah. Oh, about the horseman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How do you spell it? War of the Rohirrim. There's a trailer? Oh, cool. Yep. Wait, I'm not going to play it. Can't play it, but it's Peter Jackson. We can scrub through it. Yeah, yeah. What's known uh, about it? It's, uh, well, it's narrated by um, Miranda Otto, who plays Eowyn. Oh, excellent. She was great. And I mean, it's, it's so far very much, it, from what I could tell, it's just like a very standalone story, you know, with set in, set in Middle Earth. Um, I don't know like how much of a connection it will have to like the, you know, the overarching story of the ring, but. I mean, this uh, is some time before that, right? Oh yeah. In the timeline. Oh, but look, a lady on the horse being heroic. Excellent. <laughs> War of the Rohirrim. That's awesome. I'm going to post that up in the movie trailers thread over there on the Discord. If y'all want to watch that trailer in full, we're not going to show it here because of copyright issues. 
But there is a trailer out. I didn't see that one. Um, but yeah, just to wrap up Rings of Power talk. Uh, yes. the, uh, I mean, the latest episode is... I mean, if you loved the Lord of the Rings series for like the big battle sequences, then... Yeah. Uh, they, they, this one was it. They deliver it for you on the. Yeah, on how did you episode. feel about this battle in episode seven? How did you feel? Uh, yeah, I felt like it stacked up very well to, like the battle scenes in the original trilogy movies. Mm -hmm. I felt like yeah. it stacked up very well. Yeah, I thought um, um, it it looked great. It, it it was edited great. So you know the, I mean yeah the battle sequences in Lord of the Rings are are still really good i think most of them hold up the cgi is a little you know crunchy at times on, on some shots but um no this one was really cool and it's uh uh twists twists and turns throughout the battle like the i think the, the drama carries through it so how did you feel about the elven lady that we had only seen once or twice before getting boromir like that she got super. She got Boromir plus. Oh, <laughs> she got Boromir plus. I mean, was it not like an obvious homage to that scene? And did they not like extra arrow her? <laughs> Boromir plus. <laughs> she, how much? They Boromir plus her, man. Wait how much does she that. spend that? How much does she spend on that a month? Uh, she's oh, she's getting it free for the rest of her life because that was uh, that was the end of her. You know, with those, as you guys were mentioning, those big battles, I, I do love those big battles. Um, and my favorite big battle was uh, in Return of the King with the elephants coming. Mm, um, I watch great. it with the uh, the riff tracks on. And uh, they <laughs> the do this. this li yeah, they do this little bit where they go one two three Boop -a -doo 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 -doo. <laughs> if, if you guys if you guys have, done, have oh, never watched the lord of the rings with the riff tracks i highly highly recommend it it's the funniest thing i've ever watched <laughs> wonderful yeah mikey liked that battle too in episode seven it was great it was great uh i'm just catching up with the chat really quick yeah the uh the el the elven armies like their armor looks pretty rad yeah, it is was, it... I really liked that battle scene. I thought it was wonderful. Right up until, I mean, that final maneuver they did where they, you know, got across the river without giving too much away. Uh, just, I don't know, it built and built. And the dwarves. And uh, and I don't want to give too much away, but the dwarves, man. <laughs> yeah, if, if I had to, um, if I have to give just some... Uh, criticisms of the season so far yeah let's hear I, it i think the arcs that are happening in numenor it's moving a lot it's, it's a lot slower for my taste and i, I yeah. i'm not really connecting with the characters there you know numenor is the house of dragons it's going at a house of dragons pace i guess like so, thought, yeah. i thought there was going to be a lot more happening with numenor this season but no nah, not really you're just gonna wait till next season, unless unless episode eight is all about Numenor, which I don't think it's gonna be. Um, I'm, I'm really I'm, just spreading that out across seasons. Yeah, I'm betting like it'll probably get a lot more interesting maybe next season if that's like they're gonna show like what happens to Numenor eventually. They've just sort of been there the whole time, but not really much has. I mean, I don't want to say nothing's happened, but it doesn't feel like a whole lot. It's yeah, it's been pretty disconnected from the rest of the story. You know, yeah. it, it's it's kind of like you know how in the Game of Thrones plots of like it took it takes forever for like you know Daenerys's yeah story. I so see, I want to see Isildur start becoming a badass warrior. You know, he hasn't he hasn't done squat. Isildur hasn't done squat. He's yeah, just been around. He would just mm -hmm. show it up. Yeah, him. <laughs> and then I'm I'm really intrigued what's going on with uh, the stranger and the Harfoots. But I don't think they've like really shown a whole lot about like of them, you know. I feel like that's all going to culminate in this last episode. The stranger in the Harfoot. Something's going to culminate. He's going to. Well, he was given the choice: find your staff or go find your friend. 
and is she your friend or your destiny and all that i think that's we're gonna see we well we better see some sort of payoff for that in this final episode otherwise i'm gonna be kind of mad about it yeah and um, who and who the heck is this dark wizard what's his yeah. deal yeah what about the dark wizard where are the blue wizards is he a blue wizard some a lot of people think he's a blue wizard here's a youtube thumbnail that says so they haven't said that yet though explicitly people are so. saying he's people are saying he's gandalf and yeah they can only give certain hints because I don't think they're technically allowed to call him Gandalf, but yeah, yeah but Gandalf never got his name. He was never called Gandalf like in this, you know, time and age. He wasn't called Gandalf for like a very long time. Wasn't he called Mithrandir or Mithrand? Yeah, Mithrandir to the elves at one point, right? Yeah, he has. Yeah, he has a ton of names. He's like Stormcrow. He's like uh, his original name was. Ooh, that's that's the back of my Lord of the Rings trivia. <laughs> Let's see. Hang on. Gandalf's original name. Oh, search. Aloran. Is it Aloran? Yes, it is Aloran. There you go. I was Got thinking. It. I was. I was thinking like Kuruzon, but Kuruzon is Saruman's original name. Ah. They had Val Valar names when they came. Again, but I have to say, AC, just like last episode, uh, I love that you're so nerdy about this because <laughs> you talk about Lord of the Rings the same way I could talk about Star Wars. And I could listen to you talk about Lord of the Rings for hours and hours and hours. I love it. <laughs> it's great. I'll make you a tape. That way you can fall asleep to it. <laughs> oh, thank you. It'll, it'll be my going to sleep music. <laughs> Um, okay, so uh, there's one more show that I've been oh. uh, watching that I wonder if you guys have started wait, wait, yet. One sec, one sec. Mikey was saying he wasn't crazy about Numenor in the first episodes, early episodes. That's why he didn't like him. He also liked Tom Bombadil. I'm with you on the Tom Bombadil, Mikey. I love the character. I love that they put him in the show. We talked about it a bit last week, but it's been fantastic. And uh, yeah, some of the earlier episodes and some of the Numenor stuff is really dragon. And I hope that they pick it up with that because... I really like Numenor in the lore, and I want to like it more in this show. I want to like it more in Rings of Power. My, yeah, my guess, is that, with them. my guess is that they're trying to establish them uh, so that we, so that when, you know, the inevitable tragedy strikes, you know, it's, it's a lot of a bigger impact for audiences. Uh, actually, you know what I'm thinking of, though? Um... The sea ceremony in this last episode was actually pretty awesome with Numenor. What's the lady's name? The Blind Queen. She goes oh. into the ocean. Muriel. Gets gobbled up by the freaking monster. That was actually pretty dope, that whole scene. I really liked it. Yeah. yeah Muriel. Cause she, she, took... uh, she sacrificed herself and the, the, the sea monster decided she's worthy, right? Since everybody was confused about the eagle, uh, the eagle's message, since the eagle didn't talk. But then they had this ceremony where it's like, oh no, she's the chosen one because the monster didn't eat her. If I understood correctly, I I guess so. And I she also kind of she took the fall for Elendil. Originally, it was him that was yeah. going to be executed. That's right. She stepped in and said, no, the law says I can I can do the thing instead of him because he did Which, it in her name. He did all the stuff he did in her name. Yeah, and it was a judgment from the god, the Valar. Yeah. And, you know, that might tie into the fact that Elendil will become, like, the, the first king of the Dúnedain, who are, you know, the last of the Numenorians. Blessed with long life. Yeah. So, yeah. So yeah, that, was, yeah. that was some good Numenor stuff in the most recent episode. That was pretty good. I like that. Yeah, there's a, uh, they, they released sort of like a compilation of stories and it's, it's called the fall of Numenor. It's like a big history of, you know, oh. the Numenorian people. This is the book? Uh-huh. Oh, nice. Yeah. I'll have to check that out. I wonder if I'm going to check Spotify to see if it's a free audio book I can listen to. Could Maybe be. Andy I, Circus narrates that too. Could be. I, <laughs> I, I I have it if you'd like to borrow it. The, oh, the, hell yeah. I'll take the, it in physical form. The tactile version of book. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, what else? Who have you been reads watching? books anymore? Uh, sometimes, sometimes. 